Listeners, I'm begging you. Hit the star and thumbs up button on our podcast or we're done. (laughs) Go yeah, you know, if you want us to hang around, we've never asked a dollar from you. But if if you're not hitting that star button, I'm not getting dopamine, and you're gonna let Notebook LM take our job, the one that doesn't pay us, where we just become like the full joke of two dudes just want to talk into microphones. There if you're gonna go. get let Notebook LM take our job, that's not cool, man. Just hit the buttons, hit all the buttons, all the positive buttons. Welcome to another episode of Not Investment mm-hmm. Advice. You got Trunk fan Bilal Zadie here. <laughs> Tron, we got lots of edge of the internet today. We got the Meta Orion glasses launch. We're going to be talking about that. Notebook LM from Google, some very edge of the internet AI stuff. And uh, later, we're going to be talking about this port strike that's going on as well. So what, before we do that, actually, just a lot of people have requested this. There is now video, should be video in your Spotify app. But a lot of people will be saying, can you add video for this? So we finally are testing have people it actually been asking? Or are we doing no, the genuinely, thing where, you know, when you're like... And- Cause you yeah. know, like sometimes I'll like, I'll like, like, yeah. I'll write something like a lot of people are asking me to do this. Yeah, yeah. No, literally no when one. When I say a that. lot, it could have been two people, <laughs> but you know, who knows? I mean, it's no, more than did. one. I do remember people have asked. No, people have asked and and to be most people listen in Spotify or Apple. So if you want the video, especially for the meme in a week, you can click in and let us know if that's working. Uh, but Trung, I think you've got a meme of the week for us. Oh, you yeah, want to hear yeah. us with that one. before we talk about the glasses? It's, you know how we're all about segueing, so. This meme week has to be glasses related. So for the listeners that aren't Uber online like us, uh, Meta, uh, formerly Facebook, had an event, Meta Connect event last week. They talked a bunch of AR, VR stuff uh, with their glasses division, a bunch of AI stuff. But the big kind of uh, moment was around this uh, beta in development prototype, cost them $10,000 to make that looks like the future of AR. However, before we get to that, here is an AR related meme. All right. For the listeners. There we go. Read this out. Yeah. So for the listeners, let me let me tee this up. Also last week, one of the running jokes uh, uh, at the beginning of the week was in the tech VC community was people were talking about how a lot of founders were going on ayahuasca retreats. That's like basically you go to Costa Rica, you spend a week taking this this tropical drug, this jungle drug. I've never done ayahuasca, but I've, I've, I've heard Ryan, it's... Uh, but- yeah, I've heard it's it like, takes you to another place. Yeah, it takes you to another place. Like I've done shrooms a lot, but I imagine this is on shrooms times like a million. So like, so, but uh, the running joke on tech Twitter was a lot of founders, apparently, even of like multi-billion dollar companies would go on these iOS retreats and then come back and like have zero enthusiasm for continuing to work on the startup. They, they saw something, they saw the other side. So here's the, the meme of the week. Uh, it's a, it's a picture with three, augmented reality devices the first one's the apple vision pro the second one is a seven day costa rica ayahuasca retreat because your your reality is getting augmented and then the third one that's a 4d experience there yeah that's a 4d experience the third one is a meta quest uh three svr headset which was something they announced last week it's 300 bucks so like imagine like an apple vision pro but at 10 percent of the price not as good visually but good enough and as we will discuss meta has a lot more games so the joke was wow meta's new headset is really underpricing uh its augmented reality competitors but and so, so try and just to clarify that meta quest is obviously different to the orion glasses right so yeah this that's is, different those are two so the meta is the full vr thing which we will talk about the meta orion just to be very clear here it's a prototype that in the earliest is probably three years away and uh Whereas you can go do an ayahuasca retreat right now. and That's you're, true. You're, yeah. Bird in the hand. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yeah. the joke about Apple Vision Pro too, right? It's like, oh yeah, let's get into it. Blah. What did you, let's just focus on the Orion glasses. The VR stuff we've talked about, uh, that's not super uh, germane to this conversation. What happened last week when Zuck came out wearing these glasses that they, they look thick. They, they're thick frames but they're still under a hundred grams. And this is different than the meta Ray-Bans. The meta Ray-Bans are literally the ones that they've been doing with Exelor uh, Luxottica. That's a hundred billion dollar sunglass company. If you own any sunglass, it's basically owned by Exelor Luxottica. Yeah, they're the parent, they're the, they're the, the giant, parent company. Yeah, yeah they're the Ray-Ban. giant. So Ray-Ban and Meta have been uh, cooperating. And I, I believe that Meta is eyeing like a 5% act stake into Exelor Luxottica. And I watched a bunch of interviews that Zuck did afterwards, but that's a setup. These are not those Ray-Bans. This is something that's prototype. You can buy the Ray-Bans right now. 
the uh, Meta sold almost a million of them. They're like a hit product. Uh, and with those, you know, they, the, you can listen to audio on them. Uh, there's some AR features, but nothing super crazy. Have you seen but, much of the demo? Have yeah, you seen I saw the any? Demo. Yeah. Do you see? I'll actually give a shout. You know, our boy Callaway, you probably chatted to him before, oh, friend yeah, of the TikTok. pod. I think he, he still Zuck listens on. to the pod. He had Zach on, and he was one of the first 30 people to try it. He was there on the event. So oh, he made a really good video. And I'm just going to share it because yeah, there's play. actually some really good. Um, it's like a, a minute video, but there's some cool visuals in there. World's first fully holographic AR glasses from Meta. But here's the crazy to build them, the team had to brush right up against the laws of physics, custom everything, miniaturized components. They're even built with the same materials as an F1 car. I was lucky enough to be one of the first 30 people in the world to try them on. And in the demo, Killing we walked it. through some wild stuff. I could look at ingredients on the table, and the glasses would cool. auto detect them and make a recipe for me. I could play awesome, 3D man. tabletop games without leaving the real world. And you can imagine hundreds of other ways we could use this directions, learning, spatial computing. It's like the Quest or Vision Pro, but in a pair of glasses without a wire. It's the form factor you'd actually want to wear right. in public. The glasses the also idea. come with this neural wristband yeah. that detects... All right, so there's a bit so actually, more... I'll talk to the wristband. Let's talk to that because he mentioned Go a couple on, yeah, because that's actually quite interesting. Go on. Yeah, just to summarize what we saw there for the listeners, uh, except for the listeners that are on Spotify, tell us about the video, by the way. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So... I mean, the, let me just frame the challenge that kind of was w w was laid out here. You remember when the uh, Apple Vision Pro came out uh, uh, in February, officially, and then Zuck did that video where he's like, we actually think our product today is better than Apple Vision Pro. It's yeah. because, and I listened to a lot of the podcasts that he did afterwards, because he did one on interview uh uh, kind of like run after it was like it was a big thing, right? He announced something With that isn't gold available chain for three showing, years. Man, you know, yeah, just... he was flexing on him. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but the interesting thing about this was obviously this is an Apple bet, right? Like uh, versus Apple, and a thing that he's talked about a lot is uh, he does not want to be owned by the iPhone anymore, right? Like uh, the 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 whole battle that Zucks had with Apple in the past, I call it decade, essentially, really last five years has really heated up is Facebook made the shift to mobile in around 2010, 2011. They were desktop based. Remember, Blau, when you started your Facebook profile, you where was it? You sending those pokes. You know <laughs> where was I mean? it? It was on your laptop, right? Yeah, It was completely. on the desktop. So like people may not remember when, when, when Facebook went public in 2012, like the, one of the key risk factors was like, can we shift to mobile? That's right? true. That's I forgot the, about that. Actually. Yeah, that yeah. was like, that was a huge thing. And then what ended up happening was that it turned out that Facebook is the most valuable app on your phone. I mean, you can, can you can think about the suite of Google apps, right? Just, like YouTube, just real quick, because Trunk, when you mentioned that, I completely forgot because the usage had moved to mobile, yeah. a lot of it. But I think the monetization part, that's a great example where people are using today's frame or 2012's frame of how it's going to be in the future. So like the main point of ads on at the time were way less valuable on mobile at the time because the click-through rates were low and the auctions hadn't caught up. So the price per CPM was lower. But now so they like, have, obviously they now have they've now, obviously right? equalized because back then you needed to select, am I targeting mobile versus desktop? Now it's by default, you target everywhere pretty much. If, if, if you're not targeting mobile, you're missing 80, 90% traffic in a lot of cases. So that, yeah, sorry, go back to what you're saying. No, no, no. So that was that, a big that, That's thing. great. That's great knowledge to know, right? It's like, and that, that that's helps frame this conversation. So Facebook was able to make the transition because it turned out actually that with that restrict, because your phone is much more restricted than a desktop screen or a laptop screen, right? But it turns out when you're flicking through the feed, it's actually an incredible place to put ads because you, you scroll up and then that whatever takes the image over is, the whole screen, particularly Instagram, right? And as yeah. we as we know, FB's ad business now is over hundred billion dollars a year uh, uh, and ad revenue. And a lot of that is obviously happening on mobile. So they were able to transition, but as an app, not as a platform owner. And then we talked about it here, I think two, three years ago, uh, Blau knows uh, the uh, Apple made the app tracking transparency thing, right? A lot of Facebook's uh, ad business was built around, can you track people across apps? And then Apple just basically kneecapped that entire business. But if you go on your phone now, right, it's like, do you want to allow tracking? And the way it's set up is like, Basically, no is like a giant button. And then like, yes, let them track me is written in the most ominous way. And like, it's a lot smaller. So Facebook 
took a massive hit. It went from like 800 billion to 250 billion market cap. And then it's made it all back. It's over a trillion again. But yeah, that, that's just a setup for, for the last decade, Zuck has been trying to anticipate the next platform because he does not want to be at the behest of Apple because he is. And he they have a contentious relationship. And like Apple plays a privacy card and they're making Facebook to look like the enemy of the privacy game. But that's the setup to these glasses. So they've spent over $70 billion, give or take, in meta reality labs. And that, that covers everything, right? It's not just the VR glasses, the, the headsets. But uh, a lot of that has been questioned. A lot of reasons why they got clapped uh, three years ago with that big drawdown was because they're spending so much on meta reality labs. And just to give you an idea of how much money that is, like the uh, Alexa, so Amazon, Alexa hasn't been super successful. They have 100 million devices all in, in homes. But dude, what do you use? What do you use Alexa for, bro? For a timer. You use and it for a timer maybe and the music. Weather. That's yeah, it, music, right? Yeah. Uh, so that cost over $10 billion. Um, but iPhone costed $1.5 billion. That's it. So Meta spending $70 billion to build the next platform. Granted, right? Like the mobile phone market had a lot more makers. There's BlackBerry, Nokia, and all those parts were being created elsewhere. Zuck is like basically trying to make this from scratch. As Callaway highlighted in that in his short video, F1 parts, uh, new physics design for the eyes, right? There's 70 uh, degrees of vision. So you put these glasses on and AR covers. Think about 70 degrees, right? That's like, that's almost entirely when you look out. And um, the question then becomes, can this be the next competing platform? So, blah, I'd like your thoughts on that. And now I'll frame it like this. Would you wear these if the vision that was shown last week, would you wear these over carrying a phone? Mm, good question saying over carrying a phone versus just as an additional device. Yeah. I don't know about over a phone at the moment. Now, I, I have heard the argument that we're spending so much time on our phones and this would mean we can be more in the real world where I don't personally agree with that because I actually think having an overlay is as distracting as being on a phone in a way as well because either way, you're not being completely in the moment. Present. Now, a lot of, yeah, I don't know if you've tried the the, the actual Ray-Ban Meta sunglasses. A lot of my I friends who use them... I haven't, but I have a few. I've like tried them on my friend's one. I don't have them. Um, and uh, also a friend of the pod, Zaid Admani, who came on the show as well. And uh, my other friend who listens to this, he has kids, right? So both of them have kids and they both told me wearing that was really great because they could capture video with their kids without having their phone out. And they actually really, really like the device. So I can see that working. Um, so th there is an argument there, but... To me, it's just I would I would definitely try it out for sure. Uh, I don't know if it would replace my phone. That's I don't want more notifications either. I would just kind of want to try it out for the cool the cool stuff it has. What about you? Would you would you? Dude, I'm in this? the exact same boat as you. I know that that pitch that people are making. There's like, man, I agree. We have to get off our phones. We we spend way too much time on them. And people are like, this is a solution. I'm like, wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want this? more. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, how is this a solution? <laughs> this sounds. Like, cause basically the way I've replaced my phone now is the AirPods, right? That's the equivalent. So like I will walk around AirPods on and if there's a notification, I'll hear it, right? Like oh, you, yeah. it reads out text to you and you get a call, you tap it. I still get the notification. Does it ever read our group chat text to you? Because it does. That would be <laughs> no, it does. No, but I mean, oh, like, that's you, funny. there is that option. But blah, the whole point I'm trying to make here is like. I'm just thinking of I, you hearing present. that out loud. I'm not present, right? It's like. I'm yeah. completely in my own world. And, uh, but at least I, that's just sound versus visuals and sound and other stuff as well. So I think, uh, uh the idea that, uh, that these glasses, I mean, there's 4 billion smartphones in the world. I mean, is there a world where Zuck will sell 4 billion of these? I mean, maybe, but I don't, I don't, I think the smartphone and people have said this a lot, right? This is, I'm not the first person to make this thing. Smartphone is almost a perfect, form factor it, because even if these glasses are as advertised in that demo last week again i have to uh, make this clear these might these might never ever ship commercially those are ten thousand dollars to make each right 
And he would have to get that to the, the 500,000. Yeah, yeah. yeah, to smart. So you'd have to get that smart loan range. So you have to reduce that price by 10 times. And then, and then the other thing, there's no keyboard. There's no keyboard on the glasses, right? The typing is such a huge form factor. I mean, could you chat? You could, AI is getting so good, Yeah, right? I think the voice is a very There's a voice. There's it. an aspect of that. I, Which I, I, I could think, see I that working quite well, as long as they're not true. using Siri. You know what I mean? So, That's true. But yeah. Well, they got their own thing going, right? But yeah, they yeah. got Llama, right? So like, but yeah. Zuck actually said in one of the interviews that these glasses were the best use of AI, actually. If you think about how much AI is used, like the visual overlay, yeah, the interpreting was, the visual that world. That example he used with the recipes is yeah. all AI, right? So if people didn't see the video, he's looking at a, like a, a table of ingredients. Imagine that being your fridge. And it's like, can turn this into a recipe for a smoothie or I've seen other versions where it's like a breakfast or whatever. Now, like obviously that's a very specific example. You know how to make oatmeal. It's not that big a deal, but of course that is kind of an interesting use case. I also think honestly, the, uh, I think Callaway said it in his video as well is um, learning. Like if you're playing the piano, I think he mentions, that's a really interesting one. Like doing something visual where you're Bro, actually looking down. When's the last time down. you played a piano? I mean, never, but like for someone who is. <laughs> no, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, it, this is this is the same argument with the Apple Vision Pro. It came out, it was amazing uh, visually, and uh, but then you, you know, got actually go, ship it at some point. But then you got, but then yeah. you actually like how many? If you read uh, a lot of people that have used it for a year, I haven't used it for a year, right? Like demoed it, but like, I never used it for a year. You, you and, demoed uh, the Apple Vision Pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. But, uh, the actual usage is it, definitely you're not like, 100 grams though right like you got no, it's, it's plugged grams, in and it's, but it's like the way you talked about it is like it'd be amazing to overlay pianos like but how often am i do with that right it's like here's yeah. the other part that i want to add is like uh callaway uh we cut it off we cut callaway off before he talked about it but the orion glasses are three parts it's the glasses a a puck that has the compute uh, and it's uh, uh, it's Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connected to the glasses. Like literally, like a little small round yeah, disc or something. Exactly. And Very then Canadian of you. Is that actually what it's called though? Is it called puck? Yeah, it's called the puck. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know if it's called the puck, but that people have described. And then the, okay, there's a, the neural wristband. Yeah, so, explain that. What's that? The neural wristband is uh, they bought. It's come. I forgot what it was called. Uh, it was like control alt something. There, there's a company that tried to read basically your mind uh, uh, through your wrist, as in like. We've seen these neural Yeah, that's, demos. yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, listen, trying, if you're reading the so, mind through the wrist. Yeah, the wrist, might, damn. Bro, like sometimes. That's too you, easy. You know what? Like, they, it better when you go in incognito mode of the browser, that stuff better be closing off, man. You better. There we go. Yeah, there we you go. You better not be reading your mind when you go incognito browser. But, uh, you gotta be careful. No, but the wrist brand is, you know how like similar to the Apple Vision Pro, you pinch and zoom. The, yeah, the, the hand gestures, the, yeah. The neural wrist brand does a lot of that, the hand gesturing, but also. It can read a lot of different signals, move your hands around, control the environment that you see through these glasses. Um, th the competitive angle becomes like this. Apple already has all these pieces in place. They have Apple Watches. They can manufacture at scale, right? And uh, they're, they're already working on bringing the price down on the Apple Vision Pro. And the key thing in the Apple Vision Pro is like you can't see through it, right? They do this pass-through technology, which is... I mean, it's frankly incredible, but it's showing your eyes a camera vision of the world. But they're able to do it in real time without any leg. But the the uh, the Orion glasses are the real world, right? Like that that that's it. Like that's the real world. And uh, and that was the bet that Zuck was making. He talks about it a lot in these interviews that he does, and he's like, you know, we want to show the real world, like the all uh, we're augmenting the real world. Whereas the Apple Vision Pro is passing on to you its camera vision of the world, but like uh, done at a very high resolution, right? So the, the, I, I say the two questions long-term are, will there be 4 billion glasses? I'm, I'm kind of with you. I'm a little bit skeptical that this is the next form factor. I, it, in the sense of, I don't think smartphones will go away. There's that vile clip of Zuck being like, I think the next platform are going to be glasses. But man, it's just a fucking thing in your face, man. It, it just feels very, uh, I know that lots of people intrusive often wear, or, yeah. yeah, intrusive is a lot of people wear glasses for prescriptions, but it's because you're making a choice to better your vision, right? But if you have good vision already, like, do I really need to overlay like uh, an AR world over my eyes? Like, do I, is Google Maps like, looking at my phone not good enough already? Am I so dumb that uh, with the mapping 
that I'm going to require. Like, you know that feeling where I know you travel a lot, you walk a lot. It's amazing just to get lost. Yeah. Like, and just following totem signs, right? As in like, listen, I kind of know where the main thing is. Like, uh, take a ride to church. Yeah. You know, like, like you get it, right? Country. Yeah. But like, though, I also want to be wary of, that's us talking as individuals who spend a lot of time on devices at our age are trying to use them less. I have no doubt that like 10 years from now, people using more devices or less, very likely more, like screen time wise. I think it's less, dude. I think no, the but I think I like maybe may, it's a good question because I feel like maybe there's the counter trend of I want to spend less time on it. But I also think that's one of those idealistic things potentially as well, where you're saying, oh, I wish the world was using less and we're not at the table, you know, on our phones. And like, you know, we might not do that. A lot of my friends and I will like put it away or whatever. But if you, I don't know what your parents are like, but they're probably still got their phones out. And they're oh like, yeah, they're, they're addicted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, and so it might be that the counter trend goes in that direction and people go the opposite way. But I think there's a lot of this like idealistic thing of, I want the world to be in a certain way, which honestly happens as we get older too, right? Like we, we're like, we want less screen time. So it's like one thing is what we think is good for the world versus what we become accustomed to and the addiction comes in, you know? So I, I don't know. I think the, um, I agree with what you said about the, the mobile device already does a pretty good job in most cases. But for example, Google Maps, if I'm on a bike, riding a bike, Th that's actually better. I don't want to be looking down on my thing. Oh, yeah, it is yeah. actually helpful to do that. But it's kind of the same thing. Like Google Glasses showed this. How many years ago was that, right? Like probably 10 years ago by this point. And it actually did an okay job of that sort of stuff. You just look like an idiot wearing that stupid thing, right? Yeah, so, but these meta glasses are actually, honestly, they look tight. They like, look kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. They look decent. Yeah. I like the thick frames, dude. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. They look yeah. dope. But, but that's kind of my point is, all of these things look great in demos until you're using them in yeah. the real world. You know, we literally had a vision of that 10 years ago. People were talking about it. Oh, we're going to have this thing. We're still not there. That doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It's just we're not fully there yet. But I do like the attempt. I think it's cool what they're trying to do there. So I think it is. And also, it, Trung, I have a question. Sorry, go, go ahead. No, I was just going to say uh, a point he made, like a more on an economic standpoint is he made a great point about this is massive for the European economy. You know, there's all this talk about Europea Europeans not having the, like the tech angle, right? Like, you know, the most valuable company in Europe are LVMH, Hermes, uh, Nova Nordisk, the largest, like the largest tech company, oh, a Zampic ASML. People, yeah. yeah, ASML produces the machines that make semiconductors. But like, this would be, I mean, this could make Exelor Lasotica a trillion dollar company if it get if it gets that big right if, oh, if they this get is the that next angle yeah competing platform uh that's that true because be you're basically combining not as high end but like lvmh style business exactly. in terms of you know it's not full on luxury but it is in some way because they've got different brands that hit different price this points partnership is so i mean it's such it's a, a good, smart it makes partnership. a lot of sense the question then really is i mean the, the comparison that people make is that partnership is going to be like uh, Android, right? That's the Android partnering with Samsung versus Apple. Oh yeah, good point. I just, I just, I just think Apple. I mean, that that's a John Gruber, Ben Thompson, uh, uh, a point that they make. Obviously, Ben Thompson has to be shouted out here at least once. Now it's done like once a week. But uh, the uh, man, dude, I just I find it hard to bet against Apple. With this this hard uh, like uh, consumer hardware, man. It's just it's hard, man. They I, I would do, I'll, I'll put it this way. If Apple released like glasses, but here's the key, it's tethered to your phone. That's the puck. And you already have the AirPods. I mean, you actually won't need the AirPods with the glasses because it has the audio in it. I, I would get the Apple stuff, man. But uh, we'll, we'll have to see how long that will take. And what I appreciate, and listen, we got to give, I mean, dude, Zuck's an animal, man. It's, it's, he's an absolute animal, dude. And uh, to ship the to to demo this to prototype it after all the smoke they've caught, you're like, oh wow! Like you spent fifty to seventy billion on this, kind of looks worth it. Kind of looks worth it. But uh, we'll see, man. I'm just looking at stock. Their market cap is now one point four five trillion. Unreal. That is insane. Up eighty percent, eighty seven percent in one year, uh, sixty five percent year to date. 
that is a pretty big turnaround because you know they had that big drop was it 2020 coming up to 2023 end of 2022 down they were down to 90 dollars it's now 574 is that right was there Which like one? a there wasn't a stock split or something there was it was there a stock split no, no, I no, don't no. think so. Stick to the either way, on the chart, they have, they're yeah. gonna be on the chart. They're like for like either way. Anyway, yeah, very. That's a wild. That is a wild turnaround. They done an amazing job, man. Um, all right, great stuff, man. That was a good breakdown. Anything else on Meta before we move on? No, I got. I would love to try. Uh, I should probably get some rebands to be honest. But I, I, I kind of want to try them out now. <laughs> no, because my all wife right. wants me to wear more glasses. Uh, she thinks that well, like uh, regular they, glasses. Yeah, she's like, she keeps commenting that these the the, the <laughs> crow's feet around my eyes. It's nah. like I'm beginning to get that right, and she's like, you should wear glasses. I'm like, oh no, I'm not one of those. Want to cover up the crow's feet? That's no, so just funny. to stop the sunlight from. Uh, oh, sorry, I thought yeah, you were saying just to cover, not to cover up. them up. She's like, it's like the baseball hat of well, eyes. She's thinking long term, right? She's like, look at uh, your skin. She's like, your skin ain't gonna be uh, all oh, you that. You gotta get that skincare game. Okay, but uh, she's keeping you in your place. I see it. Yeah, she's keeping me in place, but uh, I have to say. You you haven't really aged much since I've known you. You still you got the Asian genes, man. Dude, dude, I I'm not gonna lie, man. The well, the, the you guys know the joke about Asian genes, right? Like I'm gonna look like this until I'm 70, and then when yeah, I yeah, and then it just downhill. No, but on that's January right. one, I'm gonna look like Kim Jong Un. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a running joke. Yeah. Sorry. No, Kim Jong Il, like the Sorry. really old, like the, the father. So, so I mean, someone's got mocked up with an AI photo generator right now, Trunk fan. And Kim Jong-il. All right, let's do Notebook LM from Google. Trung, have you played around with this? We can explain what it is in a second. But Why don't you explain it? I have played around with it. Okay, cool. So Notebook LM, from what I've read, it was kind of like a side project. You know, Google has hundreds of these little experiments they put out. Um, I think the original use case was that you upload like a PDF or a long text or like a blog post, essentially any form of text. Um, and I think the main use case they originally wanted was people can search and say, like, ask questions about this text is what I originally saw. But there was actually kind of like a hidden, you know, this one little feature that people discovered and have been sharing lots of examples of where it creates a podcast of two people speaking. So to clarify, this isn't, a, you know, text to speech podcast. This isn't just reading out the text, which is what a lot of these AI things do, which is already kind of useful. But this is straight up creating a kind of a fictional made up it's a, uh, podcast. Just, to, just to be clear, it's, a, uh, it's one male and one female and they have an eight minute conversation. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I, 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 demo, I, I tried it, but it, it is it is kind of mind blowing people. Well, well Bilal, why don't yeah, you do I've this? got an example here. I've Play got the one example. from. So Bilal uploaded, uh, found an example. Somebody uploaded the Bitcoin white paper. Yeah, okay. there was a, there's one. I, I've got both of those. I'll tell you the one that I actually think is better is our guy, Andre. Uh, how'd you say his Kapathy? Is, how'd you say his yeah. surname? Legend. He was Andre the Kapathy. previous a, a director AI at Tesla. Uh, we'll share his example. Open because, founder. Exactly. So the, he, he basically just, let me just share my screen here. Share screen. Okay. So this was his tweet. It's quite a long tweet, so I'm not going to read through the whole thing. But he's basically just saying it's quite powerful, worth playing around with. Someone essentially took one of his blog posts on Bitcoin. Go to blah. Why don't you go? Let's read it. Let's go back up. I'm going to read this. This is worthwhile. I got you. Do you want to read it? Okay. Out, yeah, I'll read this and then you hit me on that uh, the post. But I think you should do yeah. the Bitcoin paper one because it's very NIA. All right. It yeah, is a on, bit of a reimagination of the UI UX of working with LLMs organized around a collection of sources you upload and then refer to with queries, seeing results alongside and with citations. So I want to be clear here what he's saying. Right now, as Bilal described, you upload a PDF. You can also do that, barely.ai. Uh, <laughs> now, we also make notebooks, but uh, we're not a $4 trillion, $2 trillion company. But um, you can query these documents because LLMs can obviously read thousands and thousands of words of text, right? Or the, 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 the windows, the context windows are million tokens, which is like 300-page yeah. book. So that's a TLDR. So he writes this. I love what he says here. The, the, the current most impressive feature that is surprisingly hidden, almost as afterthought, is the ability to generate a two-person podcast episode based on any content you upload. So this is why this is key. I know a lot of listeners come to this podcast to listen to Bilal opine on his old Google days and hear Chung make awful jokes. But like you also come here to hang out and listen. To, like you'll learn something from the banter we have, right? Yeah. And that's just a good format uh, because it's enjoyable. 
You know, learning yeah. has to be enjoyable. Because Bla had mentioned that a lot of, of products now can actually read a PDF document, AI style. But you'll get like the, like the, uh, this is the Bitcoin white paper. Yeah, the robot Like a very robotic, thing. right? But you need to listen to this two-person podcast they did. It sounds yeah. like a literal conversation. Because it's got a little bit of humor. It's even like the the pause. It. We'll, we'll play it in a second. Dude, hit it. Hit it now. Let's, let's, let's do it. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to share Bitcoin my screen white paper. again. Do the Bitcoin white paper. Uh, give me one second then because I'm going to pull up that as well. I mean, I'll be honest with you before Bella teases up. I listened to this. I'm like, we're done. We're, let's shut this podcast down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're like. like these, you know the past two years when every AI product comes down and, and you got these like uh, thread boys? Oh, it's over. AI is going to destroy everything. Yeah, yeah, but this Listen one actually this. you're like, oh, this Listen is actually this. pretty good. Okay, so here we go. Ever get burned by like insane fees trying to send money overseas? Or even worse, having to fight tooth and nail to get your money back after a bad online transaction? Ugh. <sighs> the worst well imagine a system where you could send money anywhere instantly securely and like dirt cheap that's the radical idea someone describing it right we're diving into today oh yeah satoshi nakamoto's bitcoin I've okay pause that pause that pause that yeah people i want to make this clear that was an ai generated podcast yeah. about the bitcoin satoshi white paper okay yeah it wasn't out reading of out yeah, me and Bilal are out of a Jill, job. Me Let's make too that clear. Like, I forgot We're the beginning done. of the, yeah. We're out of yeah. this job that earns us zero money. We're yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe we'll no. save some money every what? month now. There yeah. we go. <laughs> yeah. The but, financial hit of Notebook LM being able to make podcasts to us yeah. is we're going to save and, money because we're currently we spending money to make zero money. And I, I do want to talk about the... Um, the use case in a second as well but just i'm just going to play 30 seconds of this this was of his blog post which explains bitcoin but really quick because okay. i actually think this was a better go better okay, one so what is this it's like everywhere okay. you so this was andre's um it was bitcoin, bitcoin from, from scratch. scratch here we go okay, okay. so let's just go and, and just give people an example here okay so bitcoin it's like everywhere you turn right but how many of us can actually say we really get what's going on under the hood not me well that's what we're tackling today and we're lucky enough to have some amazing insights to guide us we're diving deep into andre carpathy's you know the ai mastermind over at tesla that's his blog see, post, a from scratch at tour tesla of that's in Python. and what just really quickly for a pause he didn't obviously write that by himself right you know so he's not gonna they're write pulling hey, info. The, yeah they're getting context other, that's not. I, I want to do one of your ones, man. I want to see what they say about you when they pull in a trunk. Yeah, fan you know what? Read. I, I, I will do that. But I did founder mode. I did a founder. Oh mode. yeah. And we're not gonna play, but okay, people, okay. notebook. But you get the uh, idea. Like, you get yeah, the you idea. Get, uh, the, Andre's making a key point here. This is an afterthought. Like the notebook of uh, tool, they have it there, and they just kind of mention it. So Jeff Dean, uh, who's the head of a. Uh, Kind of one of the heads of Google AI. He's been there for twenty. He well, you know Jeff, right? He's he's considered he's a legend, there, right? He's like, yeah. uh, what, 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 who's Jeff's partner? Him? I'm not even sure. There's level eleven at Google, right? Uh, the engineering levels. There's two uh, at his level. There's him and uh, another guy that helped. I forgot the guy's name, but uh, there's a big New York article about them. Anyways, Jeff tweeted out this feature two weeks ago, but let me let, let me get the TLDR here. So there's a couple points. Something I've always believed about uh, uh, AI was that the last thing that would happen was like, I, I was looking at the pace of it. And just as it happened, first of all, five years ago, everybody thought that um, creative work would be kind of the last reserve that humans would have, right? And then like, they would figure out automation first. It's turned out it's kind of flipped. It's automation, robotics. It's, get, it's getting very good. But, you know, your hands, being able to do things, uh, especially when the incognito window is there. There we okay. go. There we go. No, but uh, but it turns out that the creative work is kind of going the way the doo doo. So I'm seeing the last two years, ever since ChatGPT launched, I'm like, man, what creative work uh, will be the last bastion? Is it? I mean, listen, well, Trung, we're on that. I forgot the actual quote here, but there's something along the lines of. We wanted AI to automate all the mundane things so we could do creative fun work. Yeah. And instead it's doing the creative fun work. And, and we're now gonna we're going to clean gonna the be... toilets, right? Exactly. And, like... and now I'm like, damn, I mean, we need a robot for that or whatever. So now but... I'm thinking about it. I thought podcasting would be like, 
I'm like, the well, last it one. might be the last domain. Well, actually, the real last domain is making a two-hour feature film with real story architecture, right? Like a proper story. That, that, let's uh, talk about it, Trunk. So what do you think is left? Because I, I think... Um, I think Bill Burr's 90-minute monologues is the last thing. I, I okay. think like That's Bill great... Burr's podcast, if you ever mm. listen to them, it's oh, a Monday insane. morning podcast. First of all, I had to stop listening because... Well, one reason I stopped listening is because... Every time I listen, man, I, I literally there's three guaranteed laugh out loud moments. It's the only podcast where I'll walk down the street and like do a guffaw, like laugh, like spit yeah, yeah, yeah. water in my mouth, right? So that was top of mind. I'm like, I you didn't want to do that. I feel like yeah. that makes the day. No, better. it's just because he does twice a week, and I like, I, I, it's, it's a lot. like, yeah, it's a lot of content. It's like, it's like if you had to listen to every Joe Rogan podcast, right? Oh, oh yeah, my granted, lot, yeah. Joe Rogan's like ten hours a week, Burr's two hours a week, but I think Burr ninety minute solo monologue, which is hysterical that's it that is the last realm of uh, of uh, ai that's what i feel like because this podcast when i demoed it i'm like holy shit this is insane i was like this is insane because i put the uh, attention is all you need which is the i mean you want to get meta that's the paper that's kicked off everything that was a google research paper they explained it i'm like this is the best explanation i've ever had of this paper and uh, it's mind blowing, but go ahead, dude. I was trying to pull up what he said, but did you actually listen to Chamath on Joe Rogan? Did you hear that episode? I, I did. I, I did listen, but I, didn't, I don't know. I can't because I was trying to search my notes to see what it was. But he said something along the lines: they were talking about AI and what would be left after AI. And I forgot there was two things he mentioned. I can look it up in a second. One of them he said he thinks is taste, which is quite you know a vague term that had you well, define the, taste, uh, right? It's a Rick Rubin, right? Exactly. What and then what was the second thing? Do you remember this? Let, let me pull it up because it was actually judgment and taste. Um, judgment and taste. I mean, that's actually. I don't know if you agree with that because even judgment, right? There's certain types of judgment in air quotes that you can argue that AI may do better in terms no, of just I think, analyzing. I think means gut instinct. He's like gut uh, instinct. Yeah. 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 yeah it's like enough. you know you you know there's some people that see something, you know. AI can see things more times, but the big thing about AI and human uh, is how much will we be willing to offload everything, right? It's like a self-driving car is a big question now, but I think it's inevitable as we've talked about self-driving cars. Humans are just much more reluctant to hand things off. Having said that, look at airplanes now, right? 90% of that trip is flown by computer. Uh, you punch in the pilots punch in buttons. They're literally there for like emergencies. So we clearly can hand off, right? Uh, but you're but right, like your, judgment in this is the gut feeling. You're right. There's yeah. a, and even in work, if you think of like, I think their context was work. And so the creative stuff is, you know, you a lot of the AI stuff is creating creative stuff. I will say the levels of the top end stuff is not there still in my opinion, but you know, like a really amazing ad. I'm not seeing that yet from the AI just yet. Yeah. Or like, you know, that Jack Butcher level creative on a, on a Ferrari ad. You're not fully there yet. But who knows, man? I mean, if they if they feed it enough of the best examples, maybe they can start to dissect some well, of that. Well, dude, but that podcast you meant, the second one, when you, you pointed out the exact line, Andre Kaparthi, the old Tesla mastermind, and the way they said it, yeah. it was in a joking, a humorous type of manner. It's like, oh, the you know, the old Tesla yeah, mastermind. Yeah, they're bringing that in. Yeah, yes. And if you think, that- what are we doing? Like a half of our pod, I mean, all of our pod, really, we're taking the stuff we're reading, taking it in the feed. You're trying to add relationships and exactly. make it like connections for people, right? And to people. make it um, digestible and to make it, you know, fun, hopefully. But that is Listeners, pretty wild. Listeners, I'm can begging do that. you. Hit the star and thumbs up button on our podcast or we're done. <laughs> Go yeah, we're done. You know, if you want us to hang around, we've never asked a dollar from you, but if, if you're not hitting that star button, I'm not getting dopamine and you're going to let notebook LM take our job. The one that doesn't pay us where we just become like the full joke of two dudes. Just want to talk into microphones. There if you're going to get, let notebook LM take our job. That's not cool, man. Just hit the it's buttons. Not cool. Hit the, all the buttons, all the positive up. buttons. But yeah, so and I was also going to just quickly talk about the because we talked about there the um, things that are left after AI. But I also want to quickly talk about use cases because, like, out of the two of us, you read way more than I do, right? Like, I know that for sure. I still read a decent amount, but my preferred form of taking information has been listening for a long time. I only discovered yep. that in my twenties, 
And I was just thinking, man, if this was around at university, oh my God. Like, because I, if I look back at all of the best, like the stuff I did best in, it was because I had teachers who were basically conversational, right? Like they were explaining stuff in a conversational style. They were asking questions. It was very interactive. And then if I look at my own life, the things I've learned so much about, a lot of it has come from audio. And um, obviously reading, there's, I'm not comparing them objectively. Like reading is normally more condensed. You can read faster than you can listen to. Like I get the benefits. I'm just saying for my learning style, audio is really key. And so if I could have t uploaded a stupid academic paper or like a textbook full of all these crazy case studies that I was going through and stuff like that, and they turned it into a podcast. Can you imagine? I mean, I would have learned well, so Bilal, much better. What was the original way of transmitting education for thousands of years? It's oral. It's an oral yeah. tradition. Yeah, yeah, The printing yeah. press wasn't until the 1450s. Later, yeah, you're right. For 2,000 years before that, 3,000 years, there you had like two people that could read and they'd get all the butt and then they... And they <laughs> yeah, I like the way you said but too because yeah. we're talking about the Greeks here. So no, but let me let era. me show you something. Yeah, let me show yeah. you something. So uh this actually came up blog on what you said. I'm glad it's a, a graph you showed me because I don't know where that was yeah, going I, when yeah. you said let me show you something. Here we go. College yeah. be to read Wait, full books. Read here this. we go. Okay, blah. This is the most viral story this morning that isn't related to the Middle East right now. Oh my <laughs> god. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, right? Yeah. People, we're keeping up. So the, well, actually, the other viral story is a port strike, which we will touch on. A story from the Atlantic. It's an insane story. But I think Bilal, what Bilal had said is very relatable. This is the tweet from the Atlantic. At elite colleges like Columbia, many students are showing up unprepared to read full book. Full books. It's not that they don't want to. It's that middle and high school teachers have stopped showing them how to read an entire book. There are literally people that don't have reading attention span for reading comprehension now. Like my son's doing reading comprehension in school. You know, like the most basic stuff. You read a story about the turtle and the hare, and then afterwards it'll be like, which one's faster? Reading comprehension, right? Yeah. So imagine the college equivalent of that. This Atlantic article is basically saying that elite colleges, IVs, a lot of kids can't even read an entire book. I get and, it, man. Yeah, because no, like, you get the it, right? attention like, span is changed. But know, here's so this much. chart. Here's an insane, absolutely insane chart. Since 1984, past 40 years, okay? How many kids used to read for leisure? For leisure. So this is 13-year-old students who read for fun every day. 35% in 1984. That number is down to 14% uh, now. And wow. then how many never read has gone from 8% to 30%. 30% of 13-year-olds uh, uh, in, in 2022 to 2024, they don't read anything for leisure. Zero minutes of leisure reading a day. Bro. Yeah. Wh hey, what do you think they're doing? Honestly, do I have to, do I have to like- We ain't doing uh, the callback cool again. Hat? But <laughs> what do you think they're doing? Bro, YouTube, TikTok, TikTok. social network. Yeah. It's insanity, man. No yeah. one's reading. So a great tweet from Lindy, man, that quote tweeted that article. He actually made a great point. He said, he says this is a generational thing. And because of how much people spend time on mobile phones, he's like, it's no, he said that text is basically Twitter. Twitter is reading now. Well, I was going to say people are reading plenty on their phones, yeah, but maybe sure. not a book necessarily. Yeah. And the pro what, what is the problem with that? It's you get the surface level stuff. Yeah. Why is completely. reading so important? If you just read a book, and we talk, you know, we had George Mack on here with the kill and cocaine phone. Why is reading so important? And listen, I struggle with this. This is why I have a phone with no social apps on it, and that's in black and white. When you sit and read, your mind actually starts comprehending. And all these crazy links we made, like random links, like uh, that notebook LM can't figure out, but will eventually, and we'll all be out of a job. We're sitting there contemplating. Thinking, you're in your own head. Man, reading, dude, reading on your phone, a Kindle app on your phone when you have X on that phone also. Oh, it's I literally hard, yeah. read one page and yeah. I go over. And that, then it's impossible. You have to, bro. Yeah, and the, the annoying thing, I was saying this last night. I was trying to read on my Kindle. And you know, when I was trying to buy a book 
on the Kindle, you know, on the actual Kindle device. Yeah, and I was getting phone. so frustrated because I was like, man, you know, there's that delay from when you click and then it's like a few seconds delay. And I, I can't stand that. I mean, even on like a regular website when it's not optimal, I get annoyed. It's just like a, a thing I have. So on the Kindle, it is clunky as hell. But I've already put my phone way in. The, I literally put it on the other side. I literally put it in this office. Yeah. And my bedroom is on the other side of the house, right? You so, walked over to no, no, your <laughs> no, 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 literally, I'm, this is what I did. I got up and I was like, I can't get my phone. Like, I'm going to get on the TikTok rabbit hole. I'm going to be reading some random stuff. So I'm like, I open, there's my iPad is in my gym bag. Because I, when I go there, I'm on the little bike and I watch industry or whatever. The recumbent? That's, the recumbent? Or the, yeah, yeah, uh, the no, just a regular bike okay. or whatever. But um. And then on the iPad, I have no social app. So I only have like reading and audio and, and like Netflix and stuff to watch uh, at the gym. Um, and even then I was like, no, 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 I can't. I just need to stick to the Kindle. So I went back, but I, I was in bed for like 12 minutes trying to read. And I was like, I just can't do this right now. <laughs> I, was like, I just gave up. And I was like, my mind is not working for this right now. But that is, I think it's happening to everyone in their own ways. Like that, um, yeah, I, I was also probably just, I was not feeling great. So I was probably just not feeling great and that was the main reason why um but there is this thing of like i'm purposely putting my phone away to turn my brain off for a little while and go into that long form mode like what you get from reading but not the one where you're like oh i wonder what's happening i wonder what's yeah, happening not the dopamine insta hit it's like no, the but slower think about how crazy it is right like because yeah. it's literally taking bandwidth away from your brain like dude you know what's funny about the kindle i love you brother kindle the funny thing about the kindles do you have it on, on pages or percentage when you're reading like uh, percentage i think bandwidth. i percentage okay so the way i do kindle when i have the other social apps on the phone is like every one percent i get to look at x how insane is that i read one percent of the book and serious? i go to x it's like <laughs> no but it's like it's so mental that's, that's, that's why bad, i yeah. had to that i had to switch phones right but that's that's and, what i say because it's annoying because i actually my preferred way of reading kindle is on my phone it's way better because it's like one hand it is it is you know because in bed like i'm laying on the side i'm like this, this kind of starts hurting my shoulder of my bad shoulder and i'm like this is not actually that comfortable to read but on my phone i can just be flipping away but anyway yeah it's just but i don't want to be on I the want, phone i want to summarize with this i want to go back go to your earlier point if you had this in college it, it is an incredible learning tool it is here's the thing we only did one example you could upload like 10 pdfs yeah. multiple links and it will just aggregate Bring them together yeah. it's mind-blowing dude it is Mind blowing. Dude, yeah, I think the examples think on their website really quickly. They have introduction notebook LM, eight sources, invention of the light bulb, four sources. Yeah. Westwood mushroom. I don't even know what it is. Westwood mushroom, seven sources. And just, I mean, I would love to hear people's people's examples that they've done because genuinely, this is, I think this is actually a really amazing use case because, you know, we've on the pod, when we've done all the Web3 crypto stuff, we always ask that question, Trung. What's the real use case here, right? Apart What's the from use case? What's number the use go case? up. Yeah, but in this case, this is a genuine, you know, there might be some bubble activity here either way. Don't get me wrong. But this is a genuine Oh, yeah, this is a breakthrough. Case. This is a breakthrough. Yeah. And um, in typical fashion, it's one of those like hidden, you know, it was like someone created an idea for it. It was probably like a 20% project or something where someone's like, hey, let's, let's make a little podcast thing. That would be cool. I'm making that. I don't know if it was a 20%, but you know, and they used to work in, at Google. Blow used there to work we go. At Google. Yeah, exactly. And they would basically just be like, oh, this hidden thing. And people discovered it like, wait a minute. This is actually, this should be the main thing. What are you doing here? This should be so, the main of, you know, what, you know what it is? There's way too much clutter. It shouldn't be, this should be its own thing. It but that's it. the sort of stuff. When you put lots of stuff out, you're creating lots of stuff. The best stuff rises to the top because you'll see, oh, people are using this. Now, let's see if Google actually realizes that and, and makes that like its own thing or makes it more of a front and center thing for that um, notebook LM. All right, anything else on that trunk before we move on? No, let's uh, let's jump into the port strike. All and, right, let's uh, do port strike because this is, we're recording Tuesday afternoon, October 1st. This should come out Wednesday 2nd. So why don't you explain what the hell is going on with the port strike? Because I, when you sent me this in the morning, I just remember the old port thing that happened. Was it the Egypt? Was it the Suez Canal? What was oh. it? What was it? <laughs> What was the that? The Suez Canal, yeah, yeah, yeah. Evergreen. That is not the same as this, obviously, but no, that no. was that was no. But I mean, in terms of like, there was a no, no. I, I know what you're saying. There's some correlation there. So what what's going on with the port strike here? 
Okay, so Bilal, before we get into the details of the strike, I got to show you this 90-second clip of Harold Daggett. He's the head of the ILA, which is the port union. Harold, what, what's the name? Harold Daggett. Okay. okay. Looks like a boss. So, Look at this yeah. gold chain out. <laughs> there you go. So longshoremen are the people that work on docks. 45,000 of them uh, are part of his uh, union that he oversees. They're on strike. East Coast and Gulf. So the East Coast and the Gulf Coast. Not the West Coast. That's that's going to be germane in the conversation. Here he is saying what's going to happen if the demands are not met for uh, his union. And the demands top level, or I think they want a 50 to 60% pay raise. And uh, uh, they, they want to make sure they don't get automated away their jobs. Okay, here we go. These people today don't know what a strike is. Right. When my men hit the streets from Maine to Texas, every single port will lock down. You know what's going to happen? I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. First week, be all over the news every night, boom, boom. Second week. Okay, but I'll pause. Guys. So for the listeners, this looks, he's one of the hardest looking individuals. Oh, the he's beard got glasses alone. on. He's got uh, like a beard wait, wait, Not just glasses. This is them old school rimless glasses. Rimless frames. With he's a got a gold massive, tea. he's got a gold arm chain. tattoo, a gold chain. Like, this is a guy you do not want to mess with. You don't want to mess around with this guy. Okay, yeah. Guys who sell cars can't sell cars because the cars ain't coming in off the ships. <laughs> they get laid off. Third week, malls start closing down. So, uh, I just love that he's going first week. That This is phenomenal. Dude, delivery. he's laying out what's going to this happen. What's the gonna the gonna economy happen will you. be destroyed. Okay, continue. Yeah. They can't get the goods from China. They can't sell clothes. They can't do this. Everything in the United States comes on a ship. They go out of business. Construction workers get laid off because the materials aren't coming in. The steel's not coming in. The lumber's not coming in. They lose their job. Everybody's hating the longshoremen now because now they realize how important our jobs are. Now I have the president screaming at me. I'm putting a Taff Hartley on you. Go ahead. Taff Hartley means I have to go back to work for 90 days. That's a cooling off period. Do you think when I go back for 90 days, those men are going to go to work on that pier? It's going to cost the money, the company's money, to pay their salaries. Well, they go, went from 30 moves an hour, maybe to eight. All right. They're going to be Jeez. like this. Oh, hold on. Ooh, okay. Who's going to win here in the long run? You're better off sitting down and let's get a contract. And let's move on with this world. And in today's world, I'll cripple you. <laughs> yeah. I will cripple you. And you have no idea what that means. Nobody does. Bro, okay. There we go. First of all, I want to make clear. We're not laughing at the plight of not what's about to way, happen in the US delivery, economy. Though. But I love that Bilal was about to cut that off. I'm like, no, 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 oh, no. Because yeah, that last bit was part. key. Okay, so just to summarize. The union boss of the ILA, which is, I think, the International Longshoremen Association, Anyways, 45,000 workers on strike. It started at, uh, I think, uh, a 12 a.m. Monday. So they might, based on what he just said, how ominous that sounded, they might have already negotiated a settlement by the time this podcast comes out. But the TLDR is, they want pay raises, protection from automation, right? That, that's, the, that's the top line. And Ryan Peterson, the CEO of Flexport, uh, 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 best person to follow. Uh, Flexport is a startup that does uh, logistics. Best person to follow on this uh, topic because he's tweeting all through it, explaining everything that's going on. I mean, these numbers are jarring, man. Apparently, the cost of trade is it's, it's costing the U.S. economy a billion dollars a day if these longshoremen are not going to work. And this is election implications. Um, you know, in, in election talk, there's also something about the October surprise because the elections are in November. What's the October surprise? What's the date today? October 1st. Sounds like a surprise because it's really bad because you have to remember, uh, not getting political, but Joe Biden and the unions, stream, that, that was kind of the pitch, tight with the unions, right? This is one of the largest and most important unions in America, unhappy with their current deal and they're striking and it might lead to inflation. Well, almost assuredly will for cer certain items. And um, so a key point to add is that the West Coast ports are still open. And a lot of people saw this coming. So they started diverting a lot of trade to the, the West Coast. But there's only so much they can handle, right? The ports in LA and in Oakland and uh, in Seattle. So, I mean, the thing to watch for this is 
how long will this strike last? Because you had mentioned Evergreen earlier, right, Bilal? I mean, there are inflation implications of this, and there might even be election implications. So I just think it was a worthy uh, story to pop on the calendar because uh, it is super interesting. Uh, it's still early. And again, it might be resolved by the time this podcast comes out, but I, th I thought it was worthwhile just to watch that 90-second clip of the yeah, guy. Yeah, this guy is not <laughs> messing around. He feels like a character from a movie. You know, I mean, yeah, there's the, many the movies wire, made. Right? About Close. yeah, yeah, the wire. Season well. two of but the just, wire was what people like to say. Like just the uh, well, what was the old one? What was the one with Al Pacino in it? Who was a port? Wasn't wasn't there a movie where he was? Maybe I I'm thinking of something. Like, there was one. There's a whole movie about a union boss. I, I can't remember. Anyway, did wait? No, no, no. Wait, in the gentleman? Not not gentleman. Sorry. What was the movie that was? Um, sorry, we can cut this down if I. Have to. What was the one that came where they made the three hour movie on Netflix? And it was like Al Pacino. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. The Irishman. Uh, all the, all the, yeah, the Irishman. Yeah, it's about Porsche. Wasn't right? there because like a, wasn't there a little union there, boss there, in there? There was some like, union boss stuff involved. But uh, I mean, the most famous movie, if you want to do union boss, is Jimmy Hoffa, right? Like he's, Oh, he's, yeah, he's, of course. He's the one that people, he was basically killed. The and, OG. Uh, yeah, the, and, and people, a lot of people think he, the, 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 the dark joke is that he's buried under a giant stadium. But um, the, Yo, that's uh, wild. Anyways, the um, that's something to keep an eye on. Let's. I think we can wrap this up with uh, a Megalopolis. My review. Yeah. So Trung, we obviously talked about it last week. We did a whole breakdown. You went to see the movie. Yes. And wait, did I, I see you tweet? It was a bit of a flop this weekend, huh? It completely flopped. Uh, I did go see it. Uh, I had to because we did. First of all, I wrote seven thousand words about Coppola. I've been get, I've been engagement farming off his name for weeks now. So like <laughs> for me not to go, I I'm not even kidding. I I didn't want to be a total fraud. And I listen, I've been a fraud a lot in my life. Like when we I started to tell this episode, when people are asking me, you know what? I'll write an email like people have been asking me to write about this. I'm like, no one's asked me. But like I had, <laughs> no, I I had no to one's come. asked me. <laughs> yeah. I had to come through on this detail uh, regarding um, uh, the film. So I did go. I went with uh, one other person, uh, a friend, on Saturday, 9.30 p.m. So, blah, I want to ask you. I went to a Francis Ford Coppola film, a film that, as we discussed last week, he sold parts of his winery to self-finance a $137 million film. Self-financed it. How many people do you think were in that theater on a Saturday night at 9.30 opening weekend? Throw me a number. Six. <laughs> Dude, it was, it was 11. Two. It was 11 Oh, but, but still, 11. Bro, terrible. 11 people. That's tough. So opening weekend, this film made $4 million. So some inside baseball in Hollywood. Whatever you make, opening weekend typically is about 50% of the entire gross. Maybe th for these Marvel films that have longer lasting showing, it'll be like a third. But call it 30 to 50% of uh, the film box office is in that first weekend. So this film's headed for $10 million on a $137 million budget. Not good. Uh, what's my review of the film? Not good. <laughs> it was not a good film. Man. Really? It was, Damn. it was just, the best way I can describe it That's is a this. shame. I walked out of it and I, you know, I'll say not good in a weird, uh, I'll, I'll caveat that. It's not a good movie, as in there's no plot or story development. It's like, a seek, he's been thinking about this film for 40 years. It's about the top line. I don't even tell you what the plot is. It's about the fall of the Roman Empire in modern times. The city in the film is called New Rome. It's based on kind of New York. And Adam Driver is an architect. Actually, quite similar to Robert Carroll that we talked about last week. Robert Carroll wrote a book about Robert Moses, the power broker. The character, Adam Driver, has pieces of Robert Moses, the build of New York in him. Uh, but there's other parts of it. Um, Aubrey Plaza, total thirst trap. Uh, Shia LaBeouf, total meme. And then uh, all these, the reason I'm telling you this way is that there's no plot development, there's no story development. It's two hours and 18 minutes for Coppola to give you like really striking visuals. A lot of them don't make any sense. The dialogue is so forced. And uh, there's random quotes from Shakespeare and Marcus Aurelius. It was like, he's just been thinking about all these ideas for 40 plus years. The, the, the joke that people have is, it's just a meme. The, the movie's a meme. A lot of it doesn't make any sense, but there's funny moments in the absurd. And uh, so that takes me to this. What is this film's legacy? 
Coppola said, I want to make a film that will last for 50 years. I actually think this might happen. I think this movie is going to hit the it's so bad, it's good realm. You know, like when movies become cult classics. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like a movie is so well, absurd. Like it, it's almost funny that how bad it is. Yeah, or it's, it's like, you got to watch this, how bad it was. It's so and absurd, And it's one of right? the greatest directors of all time. Yeah, exactly. Like a guy that did The Godfather 1, Godfather 2, Apocalypse Now, as we talked about last week, made this just bad shit, crazy, insane movie. It, it is nuts. Like, I wish I had done some edibles before watching it. And oh, it's it, one of I, those. I think okay. if you do, it's one of those. You'll just be like, you have, <laughs> it's just so weird. It's just weird, right? Yeah. And, uh, but I think the meme potential is so big on this that it will have a, like, when it hits streaming, everybody watches it. Like, you already start, the people that have watched it, the memes are already juking. I saw a hilarious tweet. It's like, uh, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of conversations from people that have seen Megalopolis. Like their friends will ask them, is the movie good or bad? And then that question will turn into a 45 minute dissertation on what does good even mean? Yeah. <laughs> so like, that's like what it is, right? Yeah. Like, it's not a good film in a, a traditional sense of is there plot development, is there character development? Hope is doing weird shit. The best way I can describe it is this. So let's take Apocalypse Now, which we, uh, we talked about, but I didn't talk about the creative side of it. He wanted to take a, an 1880s novella by Joseph Conrad, The Heart of Darkness, very famous novella about colonialism in uh, the Congo, the Belgian Congo. And he wanted to see if he could make it into a Hollywood blockbuster about the Vietnam War, right? And then Godfather, for people who don't know, the book itself, if you ever read Mario Puzo's The Godfather, it's like pop fiction. It's like, it's like popular, like one of those type of novels, right? But the film... Hope I want to see, can I turn into like a serious Shakespearean type of drama? And he did. It's great, by many accounts, for many people, greatest film ever. So Megalopsis has a similar vibe in the sense of this. Can you take these Marcus Aurelius, Roman ideas? It's about a, the film's based on something called the Catalan Conspiracy. We don't have to get into it, but it's like a famous conspiracy in Roman times from Roman history. Can you take all these like Roman teachings and package it for like this 2024 CGI heavy kind of weird film. You see what I'm saying? He's taking one format, trying to use the medium of film to show something different. And the last thing I'll say is, have you ever seen a Terrence Malick film in theaters? Uh, what's the most famous one? You... The New World, Tree of Life. Uh, no. uh, okay. So Terrence Malick, super famous, like also does weird films, but they're visually beautiful. And, uh, his movies are out of control, kind of weird. Like the way they're filmed, it's not like a linear plot line. It's like, he'll spend like 20 minutes like looking at a bird, right? And it's like a very, one of those visual type artistic auteur movies. I remember walking out of the new world, which is basically about John Smith meeting Pocahontas, like the legend of, uh, of uh, a Europeans meeting uh, North American uh, natives for the first time. And it's just a batshit crazy movie though. It's like, there'll be whole sequences of it. It's just like looking at nature with random music. I left that theater thinking this movie is the biggest piece of shit I've ever seen in my life. But then it grew on me. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I watched it again. I'm like, this movie's a masterpiece, right? And that was a similar vibe I had with Megalopolis. I walked out, I'm like, this movie was insane. But like, I'm still kind of thinking about it now. And uh, I think he's challenging us, right? He's like challenging the Marvel stuff. And the last thing I'll add is he had a quote that was in my article. I didn't talk about last week, but he's like, after the Godfather two, every studio wanted Coppola to make another mafia flick. And he basically has reflected and said, I didn't want to do that because if you only make movies, you know how to make, like you'll make more money, but you won't learn anything. And he made apocalypse now, which he had no idea how to do that type of film. And he learned a lot. I mean, he almost drove, drove himself to suicide. Megalopolis also, he didn't understand how to make one of these CGI crazy Roman type of epics did it time will tell I would recommend watching it and I kind of also watched it just because I think he's giving me like 200 hours of the greatest entertainment of my life like the Sopranos was built off the Godfather right Goodfellas yeah. was built off the Godfather he's giving me 200 hours can I give him one hour of my yeah. time so I did there you go fair enough fair enough um what well, I'm just a quick question what is the best film in that vein of like it was so bad that it became a cult favorite like uh, I was, what's that movie is it The Room what was it called yeah that, well ever, that's the number one that's the that's classic the, that's the number one 
uh, movie. But I mean, another one, I'll give you another one uh, that has kind of hit that range. But I mean, it's obviously not Coppola, but uh, Batman and Robin. Do you remember the one with... Um, the original? Like- no, no, Batman and Robin was uh, Arnold as Mr. Freeze. And I don't then, think I watched uh, that one. Okay, Uma Thur- This is the George Clooney Batman. It was oh, right. so slapsticky and like weird. It was like very comedic. Uh, it's kind of it kind of becomes cult. stoner films. Yeah, it kind of becomes a stoner film, and like you I know. mean that I think that is probably the most. That's probably in recent times the best of like that. But that has nothing to do with Coppola. I'd, I'd yeah. say the feeling I had was very Terrence Malick. And I mean, listen, a lot of like hoity toity film people will be like, "Oh, Terrence Malick is the greatest director ever." And uh, but normal people who watch his movies are like, "What the fuck is going on here?" And like, uh, um, like his film Tree of Life with uh, Brad Pitt. It's about a family in the 1950s that grows up, but like he spends 15 minutes randomly in the middle of the movie showing like the creation of the universe. It's like, what? Well, it is. I mean, no idea what's going on. But a, a, a lot of hoity toity uh, film types will be like, that's incredible. Another one that kind of fell in the bucket was Michael Mann's Miami Vice. Uh, people hated it when it came out, and now it's kind of turned to the cult hit. So there we go. Just looking because, um, I'm looking at Megalopolis IMDb 5.2 right now, which sounds about right based on what you said. It's not, looking, it's not crushing I want, it. I want to see a Rotten Tomatoes real quick and we can close out now. But yeah, 34%, I think. Uh, not, you know, not that it's all about the reviews, but just curious to see. It's always, it's always good to see. I, I always love to see Rotten Tomatoes is interesting because I'm, I use IMDb a lot more, but the critics review versus the people's review. Like I remember when the Dave Chappelle comedy came, like a stand-up, came out the the um, the critics review was terrible and like the people's review was way higher so sometimes there's like a massive gap between those yeah i would actually want to do like a watch a no but of this isn't a gap those, though right yeah this I mean, is just everyone are, saying it's not yeah, good the biggest gaps are the adam sandler ones oh that's yeah. a great example yeah, yeah 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 because i actually like a lot of his old movies they're just fun if you don't take them too seriously yeah uh, all right, man. That was great. Great chat today. I liked a lot that of the topics awesome. we talked Thank about. You, really good stuff. Hope you enjoyed this. And like we said, the video on Spotify is a test. So if it's not working for whatever reason, just try it next time or try it a few hours later. I uh, hope you like that. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Cheers. Bye-bye. Peace.